Catherine, we're going to break here in a moment. She's got a show right here on the GCN Radio Network as well. Dr. Catherine Albrecht, uh, a technology expert on the whole spy grid. You heard me just tell the story briefly. Uh, I, I've heard you talk about, I mean, you try to educate them as well. And so I guess that means you're evil as well? Well, you know, we're a little less evil nowadays, don't you think, Alex? Because I think Edward Snowden did a lot. Did a lot to wake people up. I think now, I, what I've heard from a lot of people, I didn't believe you 10 years ago. I mean, I've had random people that I can't even remember looking me up, uh, emailing me out of the blue, telling me, I'm so sorry I didn't believe you. Now now that it, it's all coming true, and now that, uh, you know, NPR is talking about it, now I believe you. And, you know, so, so yeah, I think, I think people would wish that we would shut up, not because they want us to shut up necessarily, but because they want the things that we're saying not to be true. And I think you hit a certain point where Edward Snowden's saying it, NPR is saying it, CNN is saying it, everybody's saying it. And really the only difference is we've been saying it longer and better and louder, and we give you more details. <laughs> Well said. I'm going to come back and get into the Snowden situation, the NSA bombshells, and a lot more. I know you've got a lot that's front and center uh, on your radar screen as well. Dr. Catherine Albrecht is our guest. I'm your host, Alex Jones. But Jordan said even more out there, uh, you know, during the break uh, about what was being said about me. And that's fine. That's fine. I mean, I'm there, you know, buying books with somebody trying to bully me into doing the, filling out some form to waive my rights. And I just told her, hey, this is being used to spy and game the people that, that, that are buying stuff here. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now will remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Uh, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Thanks to the good Lord, uh, Catherine Albrecht uh, has uh, so far beaten cancer. And it's in remission or total remission. We'll get details from her in the next segment. And I wanted to get her take on, because uh, I know she's been talking about this, some of the scams out there, people claiming they can cure cancer. Uh, there are certainly things you can do that prevent it. There are certainly treatments that have shown they're promising that are alternative. But when people say they can fix it, well, I tell you, that is a lie. And we're going to be talking to her coming up in the next segment about that. But, but getting into the whole NSA thing, uh, Catherine, as you know, Reuters came out today and, and, and admitted, okay, they're actually giving it to local police for petty crimes. They're spying on farmers. Everybody is being watched. Uh, and then we've got Clapper and we've got Alexander and all these national security frauds saying, oh, we don't spy on you, even though it's admitted they're doing it. What do you make of all this? It's it's shocking, isn't it? And I think even now, Alex, we are just seeing the tip of the iceberg. This, just the little bits that are leaking out, the little bits that we're being told, the little bits and pieces here and there. I mean, Edward, Edward Snowden told us he kind of took the lid off, but now we're starting to see each little slimy thing crawl out. And I think it goes far beyond what we're even being told now. Uh, the The amount of information that's being kept on us even the information that's being kept on us on the pri in the private sector is mind blowing. You know, I know you've been talking a lot about the show and on your website uh, about some of the stuff I've been talking about for 15 years. You've been talking about it too. The fact that even in retail environments, that the ma the mannequins have cameras in their eyeballs that are watching us. The stores hide microphones in the shelving and hide little tiny cameras to see how you respond when you read the label on the back of the Cheerios or when you pick up the American Express brochure at the check stand. 
the, the, that at Whole Foods, they were actually right there in Austin, they were experimenting with two-way um, television screens where they would have a screen up and it would say, here's how you prepare quinoa or whatever. And then while you were watching it, the screen would be watching you back and determining your demographics. This stuff is, because it's invisible in a way, it's being built into the world all around us. And there's nothing more invisible than someone else's ability to grab a, a stream of bits of zeros and ones and capture your personal information going through the Internet. So I think we are just beginning to see the tiniest little crack of it. I think if people really understood the immensity of it, it's like, a, it's like an iceberg is the analogy I often use. You see the little tiny bit on the top and you're overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, look at all that awfulness. If you could see the huge thing floating underneath there, capturing everything about you, you know, I, I like to think, I'd like to finish that sentence by saying, if you could see it, you would do something about it. And that's really, I think, where you come in, where I come in, where Start Page comes in, where Start Mail comes in, where uh, hopefully every technology company out there that wants to stay afloat during this time comes in and begins to offer things we can do about it. We need to work on this politically, socially, culturally. We've got to educate. We've got to inform. We have to train our children differently. We've got to take advantage of these alternatives out there. We've got to change, or it's just going to be more of the same. Catherine Albrecht's our guest. So let's shift gears back into loyalty cards, what you first started exposing uh, a long time ago, 14, 15 years ago. And now they come out in the Wall Street Journal, NPR, high-end stores use facial recognition tools to spot VIPs, charge you more. Websites vary prices, deals based on users' uh, information. They charge people they think have more money, more money. Or if you visit, say, a yacht website, then when you go visit something else, they charge you more. I mean, this, this is what we're talking about. And then I am called evil for nicely trying to educate a Barnes & Noble person who tried to pressure me into taking one of their cards. That's, that's evil to them. Well, they don't want to know that it's happening, really, because, you know, and, and what happens is if we don't educate people, then it's going to become the status quo. Because when I first started working on shopper cards in 1999, nobody knew that the shopper card was collecting your data. And then I remember about, oh, maybe 2005, 2006, that I was talking to a 15-year-old girl. And she said, Catherine, I think it's really great you're doing protests and you're opposing these shopper cards. I really hope you win. But I just have one question. If you get rid of the shopper cards, how is the store going to know what you bought? And I went, oh, my gosh, you are completely missing the whole point. But, of course, you're 15. You can't remember a time when they didn't have these cards. So the, the, the time to fight it, you only have about a five to ten year window on any of this stuff because by the time it, it infiltrates society for five or ten years, you've got 15 year olds who are going to look at you like you're, like you're out of your mind when you say that it's not a good Absolutely. idea. Absolutely, and they don't get that when everything's digital and everything's smart, as they call it, the globalists can hack it, control it, turn it off, control your thermostat, which they're now saying. I mean, this will make the nanny state literally go to the power of 10. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Dr. Catherine Albrecht's our guest. We're going to take phone calls with her. Will you guys fire up my phone system for me? Thanks. So I can see those. 800-259-9231. Uh, and we'll get you up and on the air. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound when I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. By the way, uh, just north of Austin, a toddler was taken from her parents up in Round Rock, up in the uh, satanic lair of Williamson County. Probably one of the most corrupt counties in the country because it's got a bunch of well-meaning conservatives that think government is God. Uh, another little girl uh, got taken from her pot-smoking parents for pot smoke and then got her brains beaten out. You can go see the video of the little uh, blonde-haired little girl. 
got our brains beaten out. And of course, nothing's going to be done to the people that did it. They'll probably get awards or something. They might as well have firing squads for kids now. Might as well oil police boots with baby blood. But don't worry, you're all going to have your life ruined too. <laughs> you're not being given all this satanic power for nothing. You're going to be destroyed as well by your own system. So enjoy. Here, let's scroll down the little girl. There she is, but they got her. And they're going to get more, don't you worry. 60 plus percent of foster children nationwide are on an average of seven psychotropic drugs. When they cry for mommy, they drug them. And if they catch you with marijuana in your car or you go in to get your blood taken for something, you going to have a baby and they uh, catch any marijuana in your blood, even if it's a false positive, you're never seeing your kids again. Because <laughs> child kidnapping's worth a lot of money in this country. Just, just the federal funds they get to string your kid out on drugs and all the sicko pot-bellied pedos they pass your kid around to. Ah, nobody's coming to help them either. No, only God's coming to burn this world up because it's what you want. All of you lovers of evil that won't do anything, all those kids in darkness all over the world begging for help right now while the New World Order tortures the daylights out of them while you sit there and preen yourselves and all feel fancy and powerful and cool and all your sick narcissism and watch your sports center. Yeah, you're real manly out there, aren't you? Tell you, stories like that make me just sick. I can't even play the newscast. I can't even look at it. And I see them every day where they're killing foster kids, especially the little babies. And they beat their brains out and never get in trouble. They lock them up in cages. They drown them. They, they rape them. They kill them. They, they malnourish them. And it's just whenever they go, oh, well, there'll be problems in the state custody. The most dangerous place in the world is in state custody hands. Catherine, I'm sorry to go off into, into darkness here. I get really depressed by this sometimes. Uh, I, I just hope all the evil people realize their party's not going to go on forever. What do you think about the increase in evil that's going on? I mean, it's definitely there. We're a cursed nation. We're a cursed world. Diabetes up several thousand percent. Cancer up several thousand percent. Uh, everything that's going on. The test score is dropping. The IQ is dropping. What's happening, Catherine? You know, it's horrifying, isn't it? And... You'd think that with all of this surveillance that that kind of stuff would stop. But the reality is it's the other way around. The more of that stuff we get, the more surveillance they give us. And then the more of that stuff we get, and then the more surveillance they give us. And it's it's an escalation. So you're you're not going to find a situation where the the more surveillance we get, the better of a society we're going to wind up with. It's never worked that way in the past. It's certainly not going to work that way now. The people who are doing these kinds of things oftentimes are the very first to get on board with the nasty technologies. One of the things I did, and you know this because I, uh, I was down in Austin visiting you guys there at the InfoWars studios, but also I headed down to San Antonio, and I interviewed a man who has worked with over 20,000 sex offenders within the state of Texas alone. There's a horrifying website where you can go online and you can see where they release these people out into the streets and they're supposedly surveilled. You know, they're not really, they just they just give you a map so you can see where they are. And I interviewed this man who's worked with these people who've, who've done time for their crimes against children. And what he told me chilled my blood, Alex. He said, you know that, that RFID tracking program that they had with the chips around the kids' necks down in San Antonio? that you couldn't turn off, that was on day and night, that could read, um, that, that sent a signal outside their homes even at night when they were sleeping. He said that the people that he counsels, that, that they fantasize about technologies like that, that would enable them to select particular victims and then drive down the street and see when they're home, drive down the street and see when they're at school, figure out if they're in their gym class. And that's right, and they're... predators just like them built this to do that and that's to be able right. to use the artificial intelligence to beat the good people. It's, it's, it's a mindset, and it's an evil mindset, and it's a mindset that says if I can get enough information about my victim, whether my victim is the taxpayers who I want to continue to, to fund my lifestyle, whatever that is, or if my victim is, you know, some poor innocent child who, who these, these depraved people fantasize about harming, then the, the way that they want to go after their victims in every case across the board is to get knowledge about the victim. Because once you have the knowledge, you can use the knowledge at that point to try to figure out where the vulnerabilities are. 
and to try to figure out where the points of pressure are. I mean, even take a look at the, the whole IRS scandal where they weren't funding political groups that they opposed, you know, Tea Party groups, groups that held different views than the, than the prevailing power structure. And they said, okay, well, let's find out who they are. And how do you think they find out who they are? Well, they go on all these websites. They use all of this infrastructure that's being built silently, and that's how they figure it out. So, for example, you know, I can't tell you, Alex, the part that makes me crazy, how many people who ought to know better continue to participate, how many people who, uh, you know, I, I give speeches all over the country and I'll fly out and the person picking me up, you know, typically is the person who arranged the whole speech. Oh, Catherine, you've got to tell everybody in my group about, you know, this terrible stuff and privacy invasion. And then they're driving me back to either my hotel or to the conference center and they have a toll transponder on the windshield of their car and they just zip right through the toll booth and I have to stop and say you know that that toll transponder on your car is turning your car into a constant tracking device are you aware of that oh yeah well I don't really want to go there you know it's it's stupid stuff like that that people ought to know better you know if we were living in the Soviet Union they would make you have that thing and if you took it off your car you'd be going to jail or to the gulag we don't have to have this stuff so why do we participate it's the same thing using Yahoo for your email you know as of June we told everybody we, we even did a press release through start page we told everybody your Yahoo account is going to be read they're reading everything for quote abuse prevention I've heard from people, and I'm sure you have too, I had one guy write me and say that his Yahoo account was suspended for 24 hours on, quote, suspicion that they didn't like what he was writing. You know, this is going on. Why are we putting up with it? And Why by the way, no amount of surveillance does anything because the evil people run it. This little girl, Alexander, uh, Alexandra Hill, and I'm showing a photo of her that makes me want to cry because I have two daughters. Uh, she would come to, they, the, they took the daughter because uh, they found out one of the parents smoked marijuana. She would come beat up, bruised, starving to visitations, mildew all over, uh, and then they bashed her brains out. And, uh, this, and the Texas Youth Commission is probably one of the most demonic in the country, and Williamson County is a feeder for it. Williamson County is a satanic group of people. And I want to just warn everybody, folks, do not go to Williamson County. Do not enter it. Do not take your children through it, okay? And I just, I, I don't mean to digress. I just look at this story and this photo. They, they knew she was being abused in the government camp. They knew she was being abused by the devil worshipers that run this country. They knew she was being hurt and wouldn't help her. So the surveillance is there to make sure good people can't ever bring them to justice, Catherine. Well, I, I think you're right because... Take a look at what happened when somebody found out that there was illegal activities occurring within the government, and I'm, of course, referring to Edward Snowden. You know, what, what did they immediately do? Did they immediately say, oh, thank you for pointing out the criminal wrongdoing so we can go uh, address the problem and make it stop? No, they turned around and said, what? Revealing criminal activity is itself a crime, and therefore now we're going to hunt you down. And, you know, that's the message across the board. If you had, had discovered that this little girl was in trouble prior to anything actually happening, you know, it would have been a toss-up had you gone to the authorities, whether they would have listened to you or, worse yet, if, if they would have gone on a rampage against you. And now your records would all be under surveillance and under the microscope so they could figure out how to shut you up and shut you down and make you look like the criminal. So it, it's really, it's a brilliant psychological and technological merger here where they make the whistleblowers into the criminals. And, you know, there's not a person listening and, uh, you know, every single person here that you couldn't find something that you Googled, that you emailed, that you did, that you purchased, that you something that if you slanted it and twisted it couldn't be used to make you look bad. That's why they want all this data. That's, that's one of the many reasons why they want the data, because it enables them to, to twist your arm. And if you think you're the only victim of it, every single member of Congress, I am guessing, has had their phones tapped, their email uh, surveilled. Everything that they do is under the microscope so that if they ever step out of line or if they try to vote in, in, in a way that would not further the powers that be, then they can use that information against them and blackmail them. And, you know, when, when you hear the stories, politician X was having an affair, you know, I, I, I especially am going to go back to the head of the CIA, right? So, you know, I mean, if there's ever a guy who knew how to keep his information out of the hands of the spy agencies, you'd think it would be him. And even he 
you know, what he, I don't know who he crossed. I don't know what he did to make them mad at him, but I'm sure they said, listen, you play ball with us or we're going to take you down because we've got information. And they say that to every person within the highest levels of government. You play ball with us or we're going to take you down because we've got all your email and your passwords and surveillance video and footage and everything else of all your crimes. Well, listen, here's an example of this family, father of a foster child who died, speaks to KVUE. We have the article up on Infowars.com. Neighbors, they're not sure somebody smelled pot late at night. Their daughter's asleep. They smoke some pot uh, watching a movie, you know, good, hardworking parents. And they came and took her, the kid, and a, and a month later she was dead. And he describes going to see her once a week at McDonald's for an hour where he was allowed to see her, bruised up, beat up, uh, you know, uh, mildew all over. And they just laughed at him. And then they, you know, then they beat her brains out. You know, that's what they do. And I mean, they're, and they're not going to, I mean, it's just, it's so demonic. The government is so filthy and degenerate. And all the police who are part of this and all the CPS workers, you're all got it. You're all going to hell. I'm telling you, there is a God. God hates you. I certainly hate you. And you will be brought to justice. This is a sick, filthy, degenerate system. And it's the spy system. It's, it's the tattletale crews. What type of people would say they smelled pot? So then the CPS comes, and then why do you even let them in, folks? The government's not your friend. That's what I'm telling everybody. It's evil. It's evil. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, it, it's, you know, the Bible tells us this, too, Alex, that as we get further, further into these crazy times that we're, that we're not only going into, but we're fully in, that people are going to turn, you know, people are going to turn against the truth, they're going to turn against the Bible, they're going to turn against church, they're going to turn against parents, they're going to turn against children, children against parents. We're going to see an increase in depravity. You walk down the street and you see, you know, people wearing openly horrific blood dripping fangs on their shirts and tattooing it onto their bodies. People are really conveying this, this, this attitude of absolute horror. And we're going to see more of it. You know, the, it, it, as, as things heat up, this is going to be the tip of the iceberg. And, you know, you, you had talked about bringing me on to discuss cancer. We're seeing this not only played out, this, this sort of increasing sickness of society is going to start manifesting itself physically, mentally, emotionally. People are going to start, you know, we're going to see that suicide rate, which is at record levels, going even higher. We're going to see the levels of illness hitting people younger and younger, cancer patients being hit in their 30s and even their 20s now with breast cancer. You know, it's, it's permeating our society because we're not only destroying the physical world, we're destroying the emotional and the social world. We're destroying the political well, world. Well, also, the natural order has ended. In the past, if somebody killed your kid, you'd, you'd go after them. And I'm telling you, there's this idea now, well, the state just kills our kids. And, and, and you've got them in the news saying, let's kill babies after they're born. I mean, we are just a demonic nation. Well, who's going to stand up for this little girl? Because you're right, 100 years ago, had, had somebody bashed in the head of a little girl, her brothers, her uncles, her, her grandfather, her dad, somebody would have, would have taken a shotgun and gone and taken care of business. I mean, I hate to say it, it's just what would have happened. And at that point, whoever did that would never do it again. Nowadays, you know, we, we sit back and, and, and we hope that the proper channels take care of these No, they just things. bureaucratically cover it all up. It's what they do. Well, where, where you get into trouble is when the proper channels are the cause of the problem or when the proper channels are, are turning a blind eye to the problem because if you revealed the problem, then you'd, you'd probably lose your job. I mean, think about the, the, the immense sums of money that are being spent on social services. And if they actually came out and admitted that those social services were not working, then society is going to have to either dismantle them or, or kick them all out and start well, over. Well, Catherine, I'm going to say this. I see it in my mind's eye, my gut, but intellectually, stuff is already starting to collapse. I can officially tell people that, that, that society is starting to collapse, especially in America. Um, I mean, are you, do you agree with that analysis? I definitely feel something shifting, and I think it's shifting. You know, I, I do a lot of travel, and the last couple of times I've flown this summer, I can't tell you how many kids have been alone flying on planes, like, across the country. I flew from Manchester, New Hampshire, down to Tampa, Florida, which is 1,600 miles, and there were kids on that plane, and, you know, the stewardess was like, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to go see my daddy. You know, a big part of this is that, that kids don't have families anymore. It's and all over. I, I've been reading the Bible cover to cover, and I just, I think it was in Ezekiel. I'm trying to remember exactly where it was. No, it wasn't Ezekiel. Anyway, one of the, one of the curses 
that God visits or, or visited in the Old Testament on societies that turn their back on him, he actually says, your children will be fatherless. And I thought, oh, my gosh, talk about the Well, curse. turn on any show. The message of the New World Order is dads are bad. Who needs a dad? Yeah, just go raise the kids yourself. You and your lesbian partner, you can you can form a household of your own. And you well, can, no, you actually, know, you know, on the shows like The Fosters, it's the cop woman and the CPS worker, and they go harvest everyone's children, and the bad guys on the show are the biological families. Yeah, well, you know, more than half the time when they say missing child on the, on the milk carton, it's a dad just wanting to get access, you know, to, 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 to be a father. Well, it's just families that have gone to... and gotten their kids back and run, and then they're on the news as terrorists because they don't want fat pedophiles raping and bashing their children's brains out. Well, and you've got to be careful when, when, when we hear about these, you know, Amber Alert or crazy whatever, take, take a look because it's very rarely an abduction where some random creep off the street just grabbed a kid, and more likely... You know, even the breathless headlines, when I click through and I look further and I actually dig down deep, what I find out is it's, it's apparent. That's right. It's time to stop going along with the system, to remove our consent, to research cases. And when we know it's innocent people running from the pedophile army, we have to protect them. I mean, it just... Well, and, and part of it, you know, do your best to stay married. You know, we need to get our own acts together and, and be better people and be a little more patient, a little more kind and long-suffering for our kids' sake. Absolutely, Catherine. Stay there. We're going to give out your website as well. well what's the best website for people? Uh, KMAshow.com is my radio website. And, of course, we're, we're big into startpage.com around here, the private search engine. And startmail.com is coming out. It's in beta, and I've got my copy. Very exciting. Box. We're going to take calls. Stay with us. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more coming in the month of June to the Info War. Most of the time when they kill these kids in foster care or in the state actual homes, they cover it up. In this case, because the little girl's brains were bashed out, they uh, you know, have arrested the so-called foster mother. But it's Williamson County that took the tip that people were smoking pot when they had a kid that came and did that. You murdered the little girl. And I don't care how many excuses you got, you did it. You did it. All these victimless crimes, all these excuses to break up families by you so-called fake conservatives up there. I know Williamson County, it's on record, is a bunch of drug dealers. You are a mafia that feeds on people and puts innocent people in jail. You're famous for it. Excuse me, look at this photo of this dead kid. Just puts me into a rage. I can't look at it, man. I'm so sick of it. All the photos of the dead kids, Al-Qaeda's killing in Syria. Huge piles of dead little kids. Our government's so sick, they gave nerve gas to Saddam and told him how to use it, and then later said, oh, he's horrible, he used nerve gas. Yeah, working for you. You're not my government, and I'm sick of you. Bunch of murder and scum. And I know everybody isn't bad in the government, but it doesn't matter. When you see this stuff going on, you either say no and break with it, like that Army MP we had on earlier, or you're part of it. We're going to do overdrive with Catherine Albrecht into the fourth hour. A lot of stations carry it. Some don't. You can find the audio and video streams at Infowars.com forward slash show for the free video stream, audio streams, podcast, all of it. And I'm going to go to your phone calls, uh, Chad and Alex and John and Joshua and a few others. I want to talk to uh, Dr. Catherine Albrecht. I, I originally got her on about surviving breast cancer. And that's a whole other subject. Why is it increasing? And then also people that say, oh, there's a magic treatment that fixes it. Well, there are other treatments out there. But they're all hit or miss, and, and that's for my deep research, so we're going to get her take on that after we take phone calls. I've barely plugged anything uh, here today, and that's how we fund our operation and stuff I really believe in. Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, totally organic, non-GMO, they have a Clemson major study 
on uh, how it is a preventative. Doesn't mean you won't ever get cancer, but having all these trace elements and minerals is a preventative nutrition. Okay, so it, it's, a, it's like don't drink a bunch of Jack Daniels. Chances are you won't have liver failure as often. It's real. Don't smoke cigarettes. Don't get lung cancer. Well, also get the right nutrients. Beyond Tangy Tangerine 2.0, available at InfoWarsStore.com. You can link through or InfoWarsHealth.com or InfoWarsTeam.com. You can go there and sign up for 10 bucks and get discounts. Uh, or you can just buy off the shopping cart without signing up. You can get free shipping when you sign up for auto ship. Uh, it's all available at InfoWarsStore.com. We have the great new film I'm in and I'm distributing uh, that exposes the history, the current, and the future of mind control to get people thinking about how they're being manipulated, state of mind, available at InfoWarsStore.com. The Pro Pure water filter so you can uh, reduce or cut out, depending on what it is, all the garbage that's out there. The best gravity-fed filters anywhere. Promo code WATER to get 10% off. Promo code WATER at InfoWarsStore, one word, InfoWarsStore.com. And when you shop with Patriots, you, when you shop with the good guys, it makes what we do here possible. And I'm putting in over 100% of our capital. I'm even spending backup money to try to expand in the face of the globalists. Uh, it's all I can do without going completely ballistic, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going ballistic in the InfoWar as best I can. I know it's a train wreck sometimes but it's real and you know what i ask god for guidance and i'm doing the best i can and the point is is we need your financial support now more than ever to continue not just to expand and i'm trying to figure out how to do that and i want to thank everybody that does spread our links and does uh, tell folks about the show and that does support our sponsors also our local sponsors support those in the local am and fm dial spread the word about the broadcast no matter how you're listening whether it's in las vegas or chicago whether it's austin or los angeles whether it's New York or whether it's Tampa, Florida. Please spread the word about this transmission because I'm dedicated to a future. Humanity will never be perfect, but we're letting evil run wild right now. And government is the problem, not the solution. And if you built a business, you built that, not that stinking anti-human piece of trash president. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the Infowars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, Infowars.com forward slash show. I refuse to go quietly into the night. I refuse to not have indignation and evil. I look at this case up on prisonplanet.com and infowars.com where neighbors said they smelled marijuana, so the cops come, bust in. Good, hardworking parents take their little two-year-old daughter. She gets beat up, torn up, evidence of torture, abuse. Uh, and they were trying to keep her up in the demonic Williamson County, but they do this everywhere for marijuana, for recreational use of marijuana, and the judge that took that child and did it is just as guilty, just as guilty as the woman that they've now arrested and they're charging with beating the girl's brains out. May, go ahead and make your excuses. You people make me sick. Catherine Albrecht, I'm sorry I went off on a jag. I saw this article, I read about it, I watched the newscast during a break, and it physically, physically made me beyond angry. And, uh, but I guess that's a good thing is now I can probably work till midnight tonight without a break. I mean, it, 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 we need, where is the instinct? I mean, I saw a commenter there in the comments saying, you know, the founding fathers would have burned down all these facilities and hung all these people. And I'm not calling for that, but they're burning down our liberties. How much of this are we going to take? Catherine, are you seeing all the cases now where the, where the cops will just shoot somebody for no reason just because they feel like it and, and then they're, they're being defended? I mean, this is demonic. Yeah, we're getting to a, a place where human life is not worth much. And I think a lot of that is, I, I hate to say it, I think it's video games. I think it's media. I think it's the fact that the average person by the time they hit 18 has seen, you know, hundreds of thousands of murders in cold blood right in front of them. And we're absorbing poison, you know, garbage in, garbage out. We're absorbing poison. One of the things I decided to do, I don't know, 10, more than 10 years ago was, was get rid of my TV. You know, stop absorbing it. And it was amazing because not only did it stop all of those creepy feelings, you know, when you're home alone at night and you hear a noise or you're lying in your bed. I don't have that anymore. I don't have those awful nightmares I used to have. I don't have any of that. And the other thing, it, it also makes you not believe the lies that there's a terrorist under every rock. 
you know, when I go to, when I travel and I'm in an airport and I, you know, look up and there's the CNN camera, it's always trying to scare you with something. And I look at that and I'm like, this is such nonsense. People believe this. But if you live on a steady diet of consuming that all day long, oh, there's terrorists. Oh, you need the government to protect you. Well, you like get into get the fantasy land. That. It's like a three-year-old believing My Little Pony's real. But the adults really buy into this. Well, they do because I think it's, it, in, in a way, it's reassuring, you know, that I, I, my own life is crazy. I've lost my home. You know, people are going through tough stuff. So as they think how terrible their own lives are, they want to think that there's some big, strong parent in charge. And I think that's one of the reasons they buy into all of this, because this argument that, you know, the homeland security is going to keep you safe. Well, I, you, things may be going to hell around me. I may have lost my marriage and my home and my job and my everything else, but at least I've got, you know, big mommy or big sister, or big brother, or daddy out there looking out for me. And, and man, kicking butt overseas. Oh, man, you know? and liberals that believe in government are the ones that really get fed on by these CPS and people because they don't know how deadly it is. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. And they're the ones who tend to want to go into that line of work and and actually want to be part of it and then once they get in there they they discover how corrupt it is and the system either spits them out or they just conform to it it's just like politics you know you get yourself elected on the local level you can make some change but getting elected on on any kind of large scale you know federal level you're either going to conform or you're going to get spit out unless of course you're ron paul i think he's got some special kind of spiritual dispensation to be able to swim with the sharks and, and not become one and not get eaten but it, but everybody else it seems like even with best the best of intentions they get out there and then they just become a a, a part of the system i agree we're going to come back take a few calls and get into the cancer issue but uh, we have to make a break with it we have to decide we're against it and decide that's what we value and stop going along with peer pressure when the peer pressure is not conformity to common law and a good culture, but conformity to, to a culture of synthetic death, a culture designed to rewrite humanity, a culture designed in the mind of Satan. I'm Alex Jones, Dr. Catherine Albrecht's our guest. Your phone calls and more straight ahead. Hello, this is Hank Hill. And I'm telling you what, you need to listen to Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> My judge, <laughs> what is the secret of the universe? <laughs> Infoworth.com. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, we're going to your phone calls with Dr. Catherine Albrecht. I'm your host, Alex Jones. Let's talk to Chad in Florida. You're on the air. What's your question or comment for our guest, sir? Um, I have a question about biometric scanners. We just uh, got one installed in work, and they want to take my fingerprint, and if they don't get my fingerprint, then I can't work. And I haven't done it yet. Fortunately, well, unfortunately, I've been off work for a uh, injury, and I'm just wondering how do I fight how do I stop this? I think you go to the top people in the company to, and, and, and you explain why it's dehumanizing, how the biometrics can be stolen later, how it's part of a plan to make you do that to get on the Internet for Internet ID worldwide and as a tool of control. That's been the official plan. Catherine? Yeah, you know, it's hard once they've already picked a vendor and they've already invested in the technology. I have talked to literally scores of people who have contacted me and said my company is is doing something like this some companies even doing like vein scannings or, or full hand scans now they're even talking about doing iris scanning in some of these companies Oh no no that's going in colleges and high schools now you got it well of course because if you can get the kids ready to accept it then once they become employees they don't even blink then, then it's easy to scan them so this generation i think is the resistant generation while they work on our kids and get them you know showing fingerprints to get food talk about pavlo by the way the violence policy center about 12 years ago in the paper said it doesn't matter what mr jones does when i caught bribery going on they said in the paper we've got your kids Mm, that sounds just like Hitler, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but imagine the, exactly the arrogance of, we've got your kids in the school. Yeah, well, that was Hitler's whole thing. You know, I, I don't care about you grown-up Germans because I've got the, the Hitler youth, and we're Nazizing your kids, and, and that's all that matters because that's the future. You'll grow old and die. Who cares about you? So I, I wish I had a better answer for this. I have not seen too many people successfully go up against their company's policies on things like this and, and actually succeed. 
one of the things that I, I would recommend for really anybody out there, see if there's a way that you can work for a small independent privately owned, family owned company or better yet start your own private Yeah, we've family got to try to company. only shop with small or, or medium size or family regional stuff that and then communicate with those companies and say, I want you to hire locally. I want you to be anti Big Brother. I want to work with you. Exactly. So I think we need to be supporting those kinds of businesses that do the right thing. We need to be boycotting the kinds of businesses that treat their employees in this particular way and help to further this this ugly thing that's coming. And, you know, I, I have to say, I've worked for myself or I've worked for private schools. I've worked for small, um, independent, you know, I've always kind of done my own thing. And I've never been asked to do anything like that. I realize it's a lot to ask for people to think about completely changing, you know, their entire lives. And again, some will say, what's wrong with this? We're not bad. It's that the people designing the, ma the major architecture do have a bad aim, a total cashless society, folks. And ask why your churches aren't speaking out against it, because they're on the globalist payroll. Thank you so much for the call. Great question. Okay, who's up next here, guys? Uh, who should we go to next? Uh, uh, Joshua in California, you're on the air. Hi, I have a couple things. Uh, one I wanted to ask uh, Catherine about start mail. Um, I remember a couple times ago when you were on, you mentioned that you were starting that up, and I know you kind of just briefly touched on it, said that it was in beta stages, and I was wondering when are we going to look at seeing that going into effect so that anybody can use it? I can't wait. I'm so excited. I just got my start mail account this week. So we are currently in beta, meaning that 100 people internally actually have start mail accounts, and we're emailing each other on them right now as we speak. Our next phase is going to be to roll it out to um, people who do QA analysis, quality control kinds of things, and then we're going to roll it out to all the beta testers who've signed up. Um, I am noticing I'm actually on the website, and they're probably going to kill me for mentioning this, Alex, but I probably should say it. Um, we decided at an executive meeting last Thursday to shut down the beta because we have more people than we really, you know, I mean, we've, we've, we've got enough. We have 45,000 people signed up to be beta testers for StartMail. Um, once we close that and we decided at the meeting last week we're closing it, it's going to go away. So I just now clicked up and realized that they haven't actually done it yet. So there's still time to slip in under the wire. If people go to startmail.com and sign up and click the box that says beta, then you will be the first to actually get a three-month trial of Startmail and kick the tires and get it before anybody else gets it. Well, that's that's, first that's fantastic. A, a good email address. I'm that's, sorry, Alex? No, no, I'm saying that's fantastic. Thank you, caller. Uh, for the question. In fact, I wanted to raise this since you mentioned it. Uh, feds are suspects in new malware that attacks anonymity. And then it goes into basically, in this Wired magazine, the feds are believed to be loading on services. Uh, it doesn't mention Start Page, but it mentions uh, some of the other groups out there uh, on the company Freedom Hosting, uh, hacking in and loading this to try to track people that are trying to surf with, with anonymity. And again, this shows this stuff works to do this, that they would be trying something like that. What's so cool about Starmail, Alex, is that it's, it's fully PGP encrypted. So even if they were able to load something and capture the stream, it would take them multiple supercomputers, multiple years to decrypt even just one message. So this means that if you have Startmail, the, if I, if, when you have your Startmail account and I have mine and I want to email you, I just check a little box that says encrypt this. And behind the scenes, it's some of the most powerful encryption ever created. And in fact, we're, we're totally cutting edge because we have this new thing called perfect forward secrecy, which means that if they do, if they actually devoted the time to get your, de your uh, PGP code decrypted, that they would only be able to read that one message, not all the other messages that you've sent. And we're the only company that's offering that right now on the Internet. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, but what it means is that you, if you have Verizon or Comcast or AT&T, we know for a fact that the government is scarfing up all of the data flowing through there. But if they scarf up an encrypted start mail message, all they will get is a bunch of encrypted gobbledygook. Even if they put a van outside your house and, and captured it as it flowed onto the Internet from your residence or your office, they would still have to decrypt it. So it's, it's extraordinarily powerful encryption. And we've designed it specifically. One of the reasons that we got slowed down by six months is because of, uh, well, not six months, about three months, was because of the Ed Snowden revelations. Because no, no, once I understand. understand. You guys are really trying to create, uh, and I'm going to have you on about that, a full interview just about it, uh, something that really works. Uh, let's uh, go to some more phone calls here. Alex in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Go ahead. <clears throat> hey, buddy. 
Uh, great work today. I have three inquiries. But uh, first, if all this is true, what you are saying, uh, the Big Brother surveillance PSYOP state, supercomputers with predictive algorithms and all the way down the rabbit hole. Well, sorry, I mean, it is true. That, I mean, it's, it's on record. Who uh, been strategically coded as part of their hack, and the best thing to do is curveball nonstop. Well, I'm not a hacker. I just know what the globalists and what top people say about the systems from, from you know, and just a general knowledge. So I don't know what a curveball is. Well, just like um, make your lifestyle and your plans more erratic to kind of trick the computers. Absolutely. But they, again, they track mass movements of that. They put out this info saying, mess up the machine saying Al Qaeda and bomb. You mess can, up. Can you, I? Yeah, go ahead. You mess Can up the I machine. Say something to this? Because here's the thing that makes me crazy, Alex. I've been doing this, as you pointed out, for 14 years. What makes me crazy is that people want to come up with really complicated ways to fight back. And then they're the very people, and I'm, I'm not referring to this particular caller, but oftentimes the people who are trying to find these far-out ways to fight back are doing stupid stuff like having toll transponders on their cars, not paying for their groceries and their food and their basic necessities with cash, using credit cards, um, participating in Facebook, posting their every move uh, on Facebook, treating it as though it were an email program, writing private messages to people, using Gmail and Yahoo email, using Google as their search engine, and yet then they want to go out and do some fancy thing and leave off the grid or go get survival food. And I'm like, dude, y there's so much easier things that you need to do first. And then once you've completely just done the easy, low-hanging fruit, then at that point, now let's talk about some deeper and more complicated things you need to do. But it, it, I feel like people are trying to make it harder than it has to be. Sure, You've sure, got just the to answers right in front of you. Sure, sure. Just to finish my point, uh, that's all a government d disinfo op to say, say bombs, say Al-Qaeda. They put out this pressure cooker raid over people Googling pressure cookers to, to make people think they're actually trying to stop terror. It's on record to make sure their money laundering operations don't get stopped, to make sure their criminal operations don't get stopped, to get corporate intel to feed to select groups to corner the market. And that's all come out. So that's what the NSA does. They don't deal with Al-Qaeda. They run Al-Qaeda. That's on record. So, sir, I appreciate your call. Uh, but I do think... Um, that it's important to vary your life anyways and not be so stagnant. But but I agree. Why do we then try to put this, uh, uh, super glue on our thumb so when we go thumb scan at the DPS, they don't have our right thumbprint? Well, yeah, do that, but also fight to have it removed, pointing out it's being used for a global database. Catherine? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm totally with you. There, there are technical solutions, practical solutions, political solutions, and we've hit a point in our society, we've got to be on top of all of them. You know, even in my own community, I just read in the paper that they're going to start having um, the roadside check, you know, stopping us, which, yeah, I guess the, the, the Supreme Court said that they can do that. These are these sobriety checkpoints. But, you know, I'm already thinking, I turned to my husband, I said, I'm not going to roll down my window, I'm going to make a, I'm going to print out a little thing, and I'm going to have it in my car, and I'm going to hold it up to my sealed window and say, am I free to go? And I'm not going to roll down my window. I'm not going to speak to them. And, you know, this is the, the, it's resistance. It's legal resistance. I'm not required to roll down my window and speak to these people. But I asked my husband, I said, if I wind up in jail, are you going to, are you going to bail me out? Are you going to support me? He said, absolutely, I'll join you. Absolutely. You know, so and it, now they're doing stuff that's like killing you as a punishment. And I mean, this I mean, this tyranny is very because in Iraq, they'll just spray a whole family on record if they look at them wrong. And then uh, and the contractors will get naked and run through the streets shooting up uh, uh, people's cars for fun. That's come out. I mean, this is madness. Well, Not so saying no to government. And we have the First Amendment and we have the right to free assembly and free speech. And we can stand on a corner and hold a sign or we can talk back to the cops in a way that is, you know, legal and appropriate. And, and you know, I'm not a big believer in being rude, so I, I'm going to be very polite as I hold my little sign up. But if I get stopped on a sobriety checkpoint, I, I don't want sobriety checkpoints in my town. So I'm going to resist on the individual level. And then I'm, I'm writing letters to our local paper 
and I'm going to show up at the next city council meeting and I'm going to say I don't believe that this is appropriate in our community. So, you know, you've you've got to you've got to do things to respond to this. Sure. But, you know, there's another piece too. Figure out what streets they're on and don't drive on those streets. There's practical things that you can do. Well, so what I do to warrantless checkpoints mess. when I find out about them is I get in my car with a camera crew and go out and tell the cops, you know, what you're doing is unconstitutional. And that's why they then, uh, myself and others, got in their faces and there were lawsuits over it. And then the state had to pass another law saying don't do that. But now they're back trying it again. But let me let me get to a few final calls here because I want to get briefly into the whole cancer thing. I want to move quick, get quick, uh, quick questions in and then quick answer here so you can say. Uh, a little bit about what you experienced with the cancer. But my point about DynCor and Halliburton and 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 then XE and before that Blackwater and all the crazy things they get caught doing, no one will say no to them. There's no uh, resistance to their tyranny, so they go crazy and do outrageous, insane stuff. That's my point. And so my question is, where are the people saying no to all this? Tom in Maryland, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to thank you for having the former soldier on your show today. You had a policeman a couple of weeks ago who had won an award from a sheriff's association that respects the Constitution. Stan Lennox. I can't, I can't tell you how important I think that is. Uh, also, as a retired police officer, I want you to know that my former colleagues and I and many others, uh, some that are still active, uh, we took our oath to accept our duty to uphold the Constitution as a sacred obligation. That's written in Maryland law. And uh, further in our oath was to accept that to defend the Constitution uh, was the greatest honor to be bestowed upon any man. And I know there are those out there and believe me, we share your concerns. We see it. Uh, we recognize it when we see it. I don't know where some of these new recruits are coming from, but there are still plenty of us who do believe in that oath that we swore to uphold. No, no, sir, I hear you, and good police are just some of the best people out there. I know what's happening. The general population is going insane, and so you're going to have police that the public think are above the law that go even more insane. That's the historical paradigm. Uh, Catherine, any comments to what he said? No, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I really believe in the rule of law. I just wish that we had more upholding of the law, to be honest. I mean, you take a look at Edward Snowden and the people he outed as being in direct violation of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution. That's where I'd like to see you know, the people who've sworn their sacred honor to, to uphold the Constitution to step in and say, yeah, that's that's not legal. That's that's not right. So, yeah, I'm a big believer in laws, and I'm a big believer in following the laws. I just wish we'd see a little bit more of that. Thank you, sir, for the call. I don't know if I can get to other callers like Ashley and John and Jason and Jan, because I skipped this network break. I got about eight minutes left with Catherine Albrecht. Uh, get into your experience with breast cancer, and I guess I, I guess the term to use is full remission now, or, or or correct me if I'm wrong. And then your concern, because all we ever hear is, you know, there are no good establishment treatments, and I and I think, you know, the uh, you know, the, I mean, statistically, they still are dangerous and don't work a lot of the time, but but they do work some of the time, and clearly. Uh, the people out there that I hear saying, we've got a pill with some vitamins that will knock out your cancer. I mean, in some rare cases, it might be a good treatment. It might actually help. Uh, undoubtedly, it helps. But uh, it, we're going to end up killing people uh, if we claim that there's some magic, you know, uh, rife machine. I mean, I've refused that advertising forever or whatever. You know, these, these quack groups claiming they've got magic light bulb machines and things that are going to heal people. Yeah, you know, I spent, first you need, uh, you know my background, I don't know if the listeners do, but I've got a doctorate from Harvard University, so I'm, I'm a pretty good researcher, that's the one thing that they train you how to do, and when you get breast cancer, and you're, you, you get the kind of breast cancer that I had, which put me so close to the edge of, of becoming stage four that it was terrifying, then all of those, those research skills, I brought all of them to bear, my husband as well, uh, he's also a, a Harvard-trained researcher. So the two of us really devoted ourselves full-time for about a year and a half to doing nothing but researching cancer. 
And we have every book, every tape, every video, every promise, every, you know, snake oil, everything out there, as well as everything that the conventional world can do. And I asked him before I was going to come on the air today, I said, you know, honey, what do you, if, if, if there's one thing you could tell people who are going to be listening to this broadcast today who might find themselves with a cancerous tumor, what would you tell them? And I thought, I thought his answer was an interesting one. He said, whatever you do, make sure that you at least find out what conventional medicine has to say about your situation. What do they have to offer? He says, you don't have to do it. You don't have to take it. You don't have to follow it. Nobody's going to twist your arm. But at least find out what they have to say. Because to do otherwise is, is truly to, to bury your head in the sand and not to have all the answers. So I'm a big believer in marrying the two, which is what I did. You know, I'm, I'm such total Ms. Natural, and, you know, I have a show on GCN as well, and I know about all the alternatives, and I never thought I would do, quote, conventional cancer treatment. But when I was diagnosed with cancer, I did the research, and I discovered that I would be taking my chances of survival from about 3%, which are horrific, um, up to higher than 50%, and I believe now I'm up to, you know, 80 90% chance of long-term survival of actually having this cancer not be the thing that finally kills me when I do go. So that's all because I, I didn't just go to my local cancer center and say, hi, I have cancer, what should I do? I have sought out every possible alternative out there at every turn. Um, one piece of advice I would give women, if you find a lump in your breast, first of all, run, don't walk to get yourself a mammogram. If you do not have insurance, get yourself a mammogram under the, and, and you're going to kick me for saying this, Alex, but it's the one time I'm going to mention a federal program. It's the federal um, cancer, and uh, what is it, breast cancer, uh, I'm, I'm going to get it wrong, ovarian and breast cancer screening program. And what this is, is it's a, a program where if you don't have insurance and if you're diagnosed with cancer under the program, then the federal government will actually pay for your treatment. Now, I'm not a believer in any of that. I didn't, I, you know, didn't even have insurance when I got to No, but it's a loophole. People don't, program. people don't know about it. And, 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 of course, I mean, you've gone over this. We'll have you on sometime to do a whole hour just on it. But, but, I mean, you did all the alternative, you know, good stuff, the super nutrients. And, and what I found was, so, so first of all, you've got to get diagnosed and figure out what you're dealing with. And then you can start doing the research on your own and figure out, is what they're telling me true? What are my chances? And if you do go conventional, which vastly increases your rates of survival, I mean, there's the, the, the evidence is ironclad, rock solid, indisputable. The only problem with doing the conventional chemo and radiation is it's really hard on your body. And so you can have long-term consequences from that. And that's really where I brought in all the alternative and complementary stuff. And the two, I, if I can just name the two things that have been the cornerstone of my survival program, they have been, number one, curcumin. I know you've talked about it before on your radio show. Curcumin is the, the turmeric extract that has such a powerful anti-cancer um, capability. It's really cheap. You can buy it online. You can you can buy it from pretty much any health food Yeah, that's store. what the health ranger says too, and and, and uh, we take it. It's it's it, you should take it. Anybody with a with a history of cancer or with cancer in their family should be. You know what I do for my mom? I just have a crystal candy dish on the on the dining table, and I just buy a jar of uh, or just a bottle of these things, and I put them in the candy dish. And I say, anytime you're sitting there and you're having a meal and you think about it, just take one or two of these things. They're that they're they're powerful. And then and what else? They, when they give curcumin to rats that have been bred to develop prostate cancer, they can't even induce it in them. It's that powerful. So it really It's works. amazing. Uh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, the big danger is going to kooks that have some light bulb machine, that's, and, and, and then you believe that's going to fix it, and then it kills you. You also go to some country hospital. They don't know what they're doing. They fry you, bad chemo. Certainly, it's, it's got a bad prognosis, but at least it's got some history of knocking stuff out. Then it tends to give you cancer. Uh, statistically from what I've seen down the road as well. Uh, but, well but, but only if you don't clean up your lifestyle. See, and this is, I just need to write a book because there's so many pieces to this. You, you've got to get the cancer out of your body. That's the surgery, chemo, radiation part. And then you've got to change the way you're living. And that's where all the alternative and holistic and natural and all that stuff comes in. Get more sunlight and more exercise and less stress and all the things we know to do. And I take 30, probably 40 pills a day. I'll have to count them. But I take yeah, you said two things. There's the curcumin and then what else? Um, the second one to get through cancer treatment is Coriolis mushroom. And it is such a powerful immune system booster. It's incredible. Catherine, we'll have to do a whole show on this soon. Thank you so much. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free.
Check it out at infowars.com forward slash show.